What is a superpower without an aircraft carrier or two? These epic warships that replace the behemoth battleships of World War II serve as a seagoing airport, fully equipped with a control tower, flight deck, and all the necessary facilities to carry, arm, deploy, and recover combat fighter jets, attack helicopters, and drones, like the MQ-8 Fire Scout and the MQ-9 Reaper that took out Iran's General Soleimani. But the United States is not the only country with an aircraft carrier, and China just launched a new ship called the Shandong that is a first-generation Chinese aircraft carrier. It is their second aircraft carrier, with the Liaoning proudly being the first, and was launched in April 2017 for the People's Liberation Army Navy of the People's Republic of China. This now makes China one of the few countries to have more than one carrier. When initially developed, it was designed as a Type 001A air carrier, but it got a sneaky little upgrade at the last possible moment and was finalized as a Type 002 by the time of completion, according to the state's media service, Xinhua. So that can definitely be trusted. The Dalian Shipbuilding Industry Corporation began working on the vessel way back in November of 2013, eventually getting around to laying down the keel for its haul in March of 2015. It's a sizable ship, the largest warship that has ever been built in China. It's named after a Chinese province and is the first aircraft carrier to ever been entirely constructed in the country. Capability-wise, it makes the Liaoning look like a joke, able to carry 50% more fighter planes. Having said that, it is still technically inferior to a standard U.S. Navy aircraft carrier. After months of trials, Shandong finally joined the Chinese Navy back in December of 2019 and is already making waves. It embarked on nine sea trials to test its metal, and on the ninth, it even sortied from the Dalian Naval Shipyard and transited to the Taiwan Strait before stopping at Hainan Island. The plan is for it to soon be joined by two to four more ships in the near future in an attempt to build something of a powerful counterweight to the U.S. naval power that dominates the Pacific more than Marvel dominates the Hollywood box office. Fans of all things military had been eagerly waiting for the Shandong to finally launch with all the enthusiasm and obsession of Trekkies waiting for Picard to finally drop on Amazon. But an ASB B-Track for People's Liberation Army Air Force 747-81 VIP transport finally tipped them off to when it was finally going to happen. Chinese leader Xi Jinping was in attendance as the flag of the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, proudly flew. 5,000 people were in attendance for this momentous naming ceremony, a key day in China's military history. The now outdated Liaoning was originally constructed as an aircraft carrier for the Soviet Union, but was left unfinished by the end of the Cold War. But a Chinese businessman with more money than sense bought the unfinished ship for no reason other than a novelty. Sometime later, presumably realizing what a mistake he had made, he gave it to the People's Liberation Army Navy, who decided to put it to use. They spent years studying and later upgrading the carrier, bringing it up to modern standards as best they could. Despite this, Liaoning has mostly been used for training purposes. The Shandong is a successful attempt by China to build its own improved version of the Liaoning for actual military use. Externally, Shandong is very similar to Liaoning, with the obvious difference being the new phased array radars and an ever so slightly different shape to the island superstructure. It retains the ski jump takeoff of the Liaoning, which limits its air wing to J-15 fighter jets and helicopters, and is powered by conventional oil-fired boilers. It has a displacement of 55,000 tons, or 70,000 when fully loaded, and a length of 1,033 feet. That makes it 55,000 times heavier than a white rhinoceros, and about as long as the Eiffel Tower is tall. But it's what's on the inside that counts. It has many upgrades and modifications that make the Liaoning look like a single Betamax tape, compared to a Netflix subscription. Such features include increased storage for fuel and ammunition, a broader flight deck, an active electronically scanned array radar system, and the room to handle 36 fighter jets. That's 12 more than the Liaoning. In fact, 
When it comes to the aircraft it can carry, Shandong is an impressive thing. Housing four different types of aircraft, the first of these is the J-15 fighter jet, ominously known as the Flying Shark. This fourth generation all-weather twin jet carrier-based fighter was jointly developed by the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation and the Chinese Navy 601 Institute. It's a development of the much earlier J-11B, with some elements from the Russian Sukhoi-33 air superiority fighter thrown into the mix. With a maximum takeoff weight of 33 metric tons, the J-15 fighter jet is easily the heaviest active carrier-based fighter jet on the planet. The second is the Z-18 transport helicopter, a new generation of military transport choppers developed by the Chang'e Aircraft Industry Corporation. It was actually based on the civilian Avicopter AC-313. This maritime twist on the AC-313 is often nicknamed the Sea Eagle and is hypothetically capable of carrying out anti-submarine warfare missions. It is armed with a YU-7K lightweight torpedo. The third type of aircraft aboard the Shandong is the KA-31 helicopter. Originally developed for the Soviet Navy and known by the name Helix by Natan, the K-31 helicopters are now used by the Indian, Russian, and of course the Chinese militaries. The KA-31 has a few unique features, such as an early warning radar with large rotating antenna, which can actually be folded up and stowed away under the fuselage, and the reduction of the normally bulky electro-optical sensor suite that sits beneath the cockpit. The fourth and final is the Z-9C helicopter, which was originally manufactured by the Harbin Aircraft Manufacturing Corporation. The first Z-9 took to the airways back in 1981 and was actually built from components supplied by the French state-owned aerospace manufacturer, Aerospatiale. But years of development transformed the Z-9 into the Z-9C, a naval variant of the original Z-9, which was first used in 1990. While its primary function is search and rescue missions, as well as anti-submarine warfare duties, the Z-9 can actually be fitted with an X-band KLC-1 surface search radar, which enables the Z-9C to detect surface targets that are beyond the normal range of the shipborne radars. The perfect helicopter for hide and go seek. Basically, the Shandong is a really great toy, full of other really great toys. By comparison, a U.S. carrier wing is stocked up with 44 F-A-18 E&F Super Hornet Strike Fighters, 5 E-A-18G Growler Electronic Attack Fighters, and 19 helicopters. Though on a typical occasion, a third or more of those are deployed to cruisers and destroyers escorting the carrier. One major addition a U.S. carrier has over the Shandong is the E-2D Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft. These turboprop five-crew aircraft have an advanced array system capable of scanning for enemy threats in the air and sea for hundreds of miles in pretty much every direction. Once the threat is identified, the Hawkeye can then vector fighter jets, or even missiles, from other ships in the task force to intercept the enemy threat. Both the Shandong and the Liaoning lack a similar feature, and that is their main weakness compared to the aircraft of other nations but China has begun work on constructing their third carrier, tentatively given the imaginative name, the Type 003. And it is thought that this carrier may look to solve the doesn't have a Hawkeye situation. We don't know about you, but after watching Infinity War, we think you can get away with not having a Hawkeye. Type 003 is thought to be a major departure from the other two carriers, most notably because it will use electromagnetic aircraft launching catapults instead of ski ramps like those pioneered by the American carrier Gerald R. Ford. The big question that everyone has on their minds is how is China going to use such a weapon? Experts say that the Shandong is likely to team up with the Liaoning in order to block foreign forces from coming to Taiwan's aid in the ever-brewing conflict. For those not in the know, the relationship between China and Taiwan is very rocky. Taiwan, known more officially as the Republic of China, is an island just off the southern coast of China, but has been governed independently of mainland China since 1949. China views the island as a Chinese province, but the people of Taiwan have a very different opinion and see themselves as a separate country all their own. Despite this sovereignty dispute, things haven't gotten too bad just as of yet. 
and as of late, the economic ties between them have been thriving. But the underlying political friction is building and building, and there has been a recent renewal in their ancient tension. It seems a declaration of independence from Taiwan is inevitable, as is an aggressive retaliation from China. And all signs are pointing to the PLA prepping for the possible battle as soon as they can, with Shandong at the heart of their operation. The idea is that Shandong would team up with the Liaoning, and together they would either head to the South China Sea to give Beijing an advantage, or just straight up cut off Taiwan like a pair of giant floating bullies. Should the U.S. or Japanese ships reach Taiwan in an attempt to help the island, China looks to be prepping Shandong and Liaoning to swoop in and stop those American and Japanese ships, no matter the cost. Other possible uses for Shandong in such a scenario is that they would be used to try to prevent U.S. long-range bombers from launching off of their base in Guam. The reason behind this would be to try and prevent American aircraft targeting China's transport formations and their submarines. In their endeavors against Taiwan, Shandong and Liaoning would not be alone. They would be joined by two Type 55 guided missile destroyers, six guided missile frigates, four Type 54 frigates, one supply ship, and three Type 93B nuclear submarines. It's safe to say you should never upset China. Regarding the topic, Hong Kong-based military commentator Son Zongping had this to say, Blocking the U.S. and Japanese fleet's access to Taiwan is the PLA's mission. However, in order to take supreme advantage in sea and air domains, the PLA needs to coordinate not only the dual carrier battle group, but also joint operations between different combat units, such as the rocket force, amphibious troops, and other service groups. The sentiment was echoed by the Beijing-based military specialist Zhu Chenming, who said that Beijing sees the Taiwan situation as one of its core national interests and would spare no effort to maintain its territorial integrity if Taiwan takes real action to declare independence. In addition to causing trouble for Taiwan, the Shandong will focus on the much disputed waters of the South China Sea, which Beijing claims belongs to them. A claim also made by the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan. Why did nobody raise these people to get along? The Shandong Lead Aircraft Strike Group is likely to be deployed to the air above the South China Sea where it will very possibly engage in face-to-face -face encounters with foreign military vessels. What would happen next, should that happen, is anybody's guess. Though it is worth noting that the Shandong has been designed with domination over both sea and air in mind. From there, the Shandong and its dual carrier battle group look set to help the PLA gain military superiority in the China Sea. Does China's move into building more and more domestically built aircraft carriers have you worried? And how bad do you think the situation with Taiwan is going to get? Let us know in the comments. And if you like the video, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. So you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching.